Praise the Lord. Well, I'm already glad I came. Anybody else already glad you made it out on this Sunday, man? I, I am. Praise the Lord. I, the Lord just uh, stirred my heart concerning just one verse of Scripture, so I'm not really going to preach it, preach it to you, but I'm going to share it with you, and, and I believe it'll be an encouragement to you. Um, this is Psalm, not excuse me, not Psalm, it's Isaiah 43, verse 2. And the Lord's talking to his people, and I believe he's saying uh, the same kind of thing to us. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Amen. There's a lot in those couple of verses. One is not necessarily a pre precious promise, but it's when. That means when you go through stuff. That means everybody's going to go through stuff. Everybody's going to deal with issues and challenges. And uh, Brother Hagen, Kenneth e. Hagen, used to say it this way. He said, the storms of life come to all of us. Everybody has things that they walk through. But how many are thankful that we don't, we don't focus on the storms? We don't focus on the wind. We don't focus on the rain. We don't focus on the fire. We, don't fo we focus on the one who started a good work in us, believing and knowing that he's going to complete that work in our life. We focus on the finisher. He said, I will be with you. I will be with you. Praise the Lord. So I wrote it down this way. Just because you're going through it doesn't mean God is through with you. Just because you're going through it and whatever that it is, just know that God's not through with you. Praise God. And so... Um, these testimonies you're going to hear this morning, they're going to be an encouragement to your faith. And whether you realize it or not, if you read through particularly Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, not only do you hear it in uh, the words of Jesus or read the words of Jesus, but it's filled with what? Stories and testimonies of what God has done or what Jesus did in people's lives, right? And uh, we know scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so in, in some way, there's a truth here that the testimony of what Jesus has done in people's lives, when you hear it and receive it, it will put faith in your heart for what he'll do in yours. Amen. So there's a faith I believe you can walk out of here with no matter uh, what your year or what your life is like right now. And I believe it'll stir you to believe for all that he will do uh, in your life and in your future. Praise God. So I got a, I got a few uh, testimonies, a couple videos. We'll have communion and worship together as we finish uh, a, a service today as we wrap it up together. So um, I'd like to start with Drew and Caitlin Maddox. Y'all can go ahead and come up real quickly. And um, been a part of our church. Thank you. Here, go ahead. I've been a part of our church for a number of years off and on, and I'm not sure how much of that story um, he or she will tell, but uh, for now, they're here. We're glad they're here and coaching here and, and um, teaching and all the good stuff, and so we're blessed to have him, have him here. He looks like, like a Spartan. I don't know, it looks like a beast, man. Like, uh, just want to be nice to him so you can tell a little bit. I know, I know you may or may not know, but he coaches at Louisiana College there, uh, football. And so, anyway. No, no, I'll hand it to you. Go for it. Uh, so, let me say this first off. God, help me be cl clear and concise uh, in Jesus' name. If anybody in here, I've, I've, I've got a player over there, so he's seen me at my worst before. Just know that was me and not God. <laughs> and anybody else I've ever heard, I always say that when I speak because uh, I'm a flawed person, right? But by Jesus, he made me right. Amen. But I'll, I can mess it up. So if I've ever hurt anybody in here, I'm sorry. Listen to the message, though. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. I hope this encouraged and helps someone. To be honest with you, when Pastor uh, called me uh, a couple days ago and asked me to do this, uh, I thought, man, I'm going to go kill it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get everybody fired up and all that. But what I didn't realize was it was actually going to help me out more. To remember where I've come from, man. Gracious, my eyes watered up this morning when I was listening to, I guess, the second song, because you get to thinking about what God's done in your life, and you're like, man, I don't deserve that. God, he's been so good to me, so uh, thanks for allowing me to come up here and, uh, and do this, all right? Yeah. Uh, push and pray and stand on your vision. That's what I called it when I wrote my, my thoughts down. Always knew I wanted to be a football coach. Uh, in middle school, I told a middle school teacher that. It was like a deal. She asked me, uh, what, what do you guys, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life? Have you thought about it? I was like, I want to I coach football and teach history. That's what I told everybody, right? <laughs> uh, I got in a little bit of trouble uh, my freshman year at Louisiana Tech University. That's a whole other testimony. Uh, but I found myself in the United States Army. My dad's a pastor. He imparted a uh, cool part about my dad. Let's say this real quick. The cool part about my dad was he wasn't a Christian. And when he, when he decided to, uh, to follow God, 
And uh, Jesus changed him. I'm talking about 180. Now he's a pastor. He pastors the church, Pastor Aaron, them know him and all that. But the good part about my dad is I saw Jesus in him. I knew <laughs> that man changed. Yeah. And I knew that if I, if I saw what he did in his life, I knew how important it was. So he imparted a bunch of good things in me. Uh, so I'm sitting in Iraq in 2008 based off of choices that I made. Uh, it was tough and it was hard on me. And it was the first time, uh, first time in my life that I, I knew loneliness like I'd never known it before. Uh, people were trying to kill me and I couldn't even call my parents and tell them about it. Uh, and then somebody had given me a Bible uh, in an airport in Dallas. I hope one day I'll see her in heaven. I can remember her face. Uh, and I, I got back into my chew. I was, I was thinking about everything that had happened and I was so lonely feeling. And uh, I, I walked back into my chew and I sat down on my bed. I opened up the Bible because I had that, I had that inside of me from my dad and what he had taught me as a child. Uh, and, and I opened it up, searching, looking, needing something. And uh, anyways, Jeremiah 29, 11 was on the front page of the Bible in a little spot. For God knows the plans he has for you. They're good, right. not a disaster. to give you a future and give you hope. Yeah. I read a little bit further on in like 13, verse 12 and 13, it talks about he'll, he'll take you back from the places that he sent you and bring you back to your home again. It got in my soul. I cannot tell you guys, it got into my soul. I knew right then that I was gonna make it home. I didn't care, I, didn't, I wasn't scared anymore. It didn't matter what it was, I wasn't scared anymore. And uh, so I come back, let's get back onto this. I come, I come back, I still wanted to, still wanted to play football, uh, still wanted to coach football. Uh, had a one point, my wife's telling me, I had a 1.1 GPA for my freshman year at Louisiana Tech. <laughs> uh, so uh, I come back, uh, got home, uh, you know, and I, I had a, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to play football. My wife and me, we get married a month and a half after being married. She tells me she's, she's pregnant, which is a miracle in itself because she wasn't supposed to be able to get pregnant, uh, which is a good thing, but it put me back two years, guys. It put me back two years. Two years I had to work and provide to, until she got through with school and then I could go chase my dream. Pray and push, right? Pray and push, stay on your vision, stand on your vision. That's good. Uh, moved to Pineville at 25 years old with a wife and a kid. <laughs> some people in my family, some in-laws uh, said I was crazy. <laughs> what are you doing, quitting your job and going back to school, you're 25 with a wife and kid and all that? Pray and push, remember your vision. Good. Uh, started coaching. Right after I got through playing, I made $500 a month or fewer for about 18 months. Wow. Working full time. You work full time pay. $500 a month uh, for 18 months. Pray and push. We still tithe during that time. We wow. still tithe during that time. Wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, everybody always, I say this too, and then, and then I'll get down to the end of it and get to, to where we're at now and, and what God's done. But uh, during that time, when I was first working, when we were first going, uh, it was extremely hard. Nobody knew what I was doing during that time where I was making $500 when I was pretty much interning as a football coach. But what I took it as, I was going to learn as much as I could. Right. And then I was going to do everything I could. And it's kind of like King David. A lot of people saw it was in front of everybody when he slayed the giant. But nobody really talks about when he killed a bear and a, li and a lion for his flock earlier on. Right. He did that when nobody was watching. That's right. And so I challenge everybody like, hey, when no one's watching, what are you doing? What are you doing during that time to prepare? Uh, so make sure you're doing what's right during that time. In 2018, I took a job at a small high school. After I was the defense coordinator at a college, I took a job at a small high school. Everybody, I went up there, I told my wife I was going up there just because I'd never interviewed for a head coaching job before. And that's why I went up there. Yeah. And when I got up there, it hit me like a ton of bricks. You're gonna be here next year. And I was like, oh no, that's not, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to do that, uh-uh. <laughs> What I didn't know was I was gonna learn everything I needed for the next job. So I stepped out in faith again. My wife told me, uh, I know this on TV, I'm sorry if this puts you in a bond. Uh, my wife told me she would follow me to anywhere, the ends of the earth, as long as it was not her hometown. <laughs> that job, <laughs> that job was in her hometown. <laughs> and she did. Uh, 2020, they hired me back here. I was hired for two months and COVID happened. Everybody told me don't take this job. It can't be done. They hadn't had a winning season in eight years. Uh, they were in a terrible spot, da 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 da. Uh, pray and push. 21, we went four and seven at Louisiana Christian University as a football team. 
2022, we went seven and four. Yeah. The first winning season in seven years. Yeah. Uh, this past year, we went nine and two, and we won a conference championship. Yeah. The, the first one in the history of the school. Wow. Uh, before this season, my entire staff, except for one guy, left. So we've got, we're sitting on the best team. My entire staff, except for one, left. All right. And uh, it, it was tough because you, you get that kind of turnover and you know what you're sitting on and you're, you're scared. Pray and push. Pray and push. Remember where God's been and where you've been and what God's brought you through. That's right. And that's, that's the part. So when I was doing all this, I just I thought to myself and I wrote this on here. Uh, my wife reminded me during that time when the staff changed over, you pray for the right players and the right coaches to be here. Do you believe it or not? That's what she told me. Because I was mopey about, hey, I keep having to hire coaches. I don't know, we're probably not going to be as good. And she was like, that's what you pray. You either believe it or you don't. Uh, and we did. Uh, and the last thing I put on here is this. Writing this and thinking about what God's done for us, it just grew me even more in my faith. I was kind of in a spot just to be candid with everybody here. I thought maybe I might get a bigger job. I didn't, and that's okay. And, and writing this and thinking about it, I just want to be wherever God wants me to be. That's right. Because of what he's done in our lives. And I'm excited to keep pushing and be content with where we're at. So thank you so much for giving us a chance yeah, to do this. So Anything else that I missed? You should say something. I would just say he didn't, we ate beans and ate deer meat from his dad for a lot of years when Allie was little. And so many opportunities came up for him to take a different path, you know, fire department, security, and we just, we just stayed on the faith and the vision that God gave us and didn't take the easy path. And now, you know, we had steak last night. So he's brought us out, out of where we came from because we stayed faithful. Wonderful. That's good. I'll take it. Uh, that was great. Thank y'all. That was awesome. My goodness. What a testimony. What a testimony. Praise the Lord. I want to say this. Um, uh, some of you may be aware, aware but uh, Miss Jamie Marks, who's a part of our church family, was in an uh, accident uh, a number of weeks ago. Um, and, and a lot of families are right over here. And so, um, but we're thankful that the Lord kept her preserved her and she's well on her way to a full and complete recovery in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. So, um, and maybe she's watching right now too. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to read this to you. It's from uh, Bethany Herrick, Herrick and um, she's here somewhere. There you go, right there. And her husband plays a guitar. He's already in Pineville, maybe. Um, uh, uh, this is what she wrote. She said, I had blood work run in October of 2023 and when the doctor reviewed it, he wasn't comfortable with the white blood count and referred me to an oncologist and was concerned that it might be uh, leukopenia, a bone marrow cancer. And they did not, sh uh, that d this did not shake me as immediately I began confessing the word and claiming the healing provided by the stripes of Jesus bore for my healing. I asked my husband, my children, and my two closest prayer partners, uh, Matt and April, to believe with me for the report of the Lord to reign and praise God the following week where I received a clean report that my blood was perfect, no cancer, to God be the glory. So there you go. I love that. Amen. Um, I have a video testimony from Luke and Haley Lonergan. They're not here. Um, they're, I think, with family, and then their anniversary's tomorrow or something like that, and so they're out of town. But I asked them to, to share a little bit. So um, it's not long, but I believe it'll be a blessing to you. <laughs> Hey church family, here we are wrapping up 2023 and going into the new year and we wanted to share some of the wins, some of the things the Lord has done for us and a bit of our testimony, what God has done in our life and our family this last year. Um, I have a scripture I wanted to share that kind of summarizes what, kind of what the Lord has been bringing us through and it's Deuteronomy 30 verse 9 that says, the Lord your God will make you prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb and the young, the, the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. I don't really have livestock, but the Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous just as he delighted in your ancestors or your fathers. And that is really a testimony of what the Lord has done in our family and in our life is um, all the areas that 
if you could look back and see the things that used to be hard for us, the things that used to be a struggle for us, the areas that we wrestled with but didn't necessarily have victory in, now the Lord has really, through this last year especially, brought us victory and strength um, and overcoming power and um, prosperity in the areas that were so hard for us before. Now, instead of struggle, we have peace. Instead of pain, we have joy. Um, and we've been able to win some of the battles. I, I've been saying it like this, is that um, it's work, but it's worth it. And not that we haven't had any challenges or battles, but we've gone into battles and we've come out the other side victorious. Um, we are living in some of the brighter days, but at the same time, these are not the brightest days that we'll ever have. We're going from glory to glory, and the Lord's really been taking us through that. Um, one of the other things, um, if you looked at all the different categories of our life, things that the Lord's been working on us in, um, he's given us projects and assignments um, and areas to focus on. They're for 2023, but obviously they're going to continue onward. Um, is that he has sent us relationships. And I think if you could count the best blessings that God gives you, um, that relationships would be way up there in the top. Um, and that he has sent us relationships that are supernatural, that are God-given, God-ordained. Yeah. And then he's given us wisdom on how to partner together with those people that he's sent in our life, that he's given us, and people that he's given us to. Um, as teammates, as partners, as friends, um, in the body of Christ, in business, and just as friends and in family, um, and that the Lord has given us wisdom to steward those relationships and to grow in them. Um, and he's really helped us in that in a big way. So that's a big part of our testimony that the Lord gets glory for is that he has, he has really helped us yeah. um, in that area of relationships and friends and, um, and partners. Um, the other thing, I had one more verse. Um, that's been on my heart for this is that uh, Proverbs 16, nine says that the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And um, in our family, um, in our different, ca every category of life, the Lord has worked on establishing us more and more. And that's the story that we're able to tell now is that we have been brought forward um, and been established. Um, things that were weak are strong. Things that weren't even there Hey, they're there now, <laughs> you know, um, and it's been it's been um, a joy and something that we're rejoicing over is that the Lord has been establishing us over and over again in all these other categories and that the best is yet to come yeah. and that the brighter days are here uh, and that we're going into more of them. And what I really love and I'm excited about is we're blessed to be a blessing and we're able to not just sit here and stand here and tell you about how God, go how good God has been to us. But to say, hey, um, we can link arms and go together as a body um, and as some of those God-given relationships. Um, and we can all go forward together into the brighter days that he has for us. Um, and I'm super excited about that. and We're rejoicing over that. And just wanted to share that God has been really good to us in those ways and that we're looking forward to what he has for us in the year to come. Yep. Amen. 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 And more babies. <laughs> More babies. Who receives that word? I do not receive that word right there, but everything else I liked. Um, I want to share this from uh, Aaron Stein right here. Wave your hand. Right. Wave your hand. Everybody can see it. All right. So I'm, one more time. Leave it up for just a moment. So I'm not making this stuff up. All right. Her and her husband, Doug, and then Bailey, of course, and their family. Um, the Lord sent them here, I believe. And so she's got a, a, quite a testimony. I'm going to do my best to kind of get through parts of it. It's really amazing. Um, They've been here with us for a few years, but she said Doug accepted a position, and then they moved to Alexandria um, with a start date of October 1st in 2020. And so they got situated and, and found Christian Worship Center and all the different parts of you know their life kind of coming together. She was applying for jobs, uh, but in the middle of all that, Doug ended up in the hospital here locally, and um, he's having heart, heart issues, right? Is that right? And heart trouble. and two weeks in the local hospital and they transferred him to Dallas um, since there was nothing else they could do for him here his condition was worsening rapidly and on December 6 2021 Doug was given uh, the greatest gift any person could give he received his heart 
he had a heart transplant, right? He had a heart transplant from a person kind enough to be an organ donor. And it was a miraculous, come on, that's, amen, <laughs> praise God. And he was here for the holidays. Did he go back already? And I don't know. Yeah, okay. And um, so it was a miraculous season in our lives. We spent the next year, 2022, making 38 trips back and forth to Dallas and she still didn't have a job. During this time, we practiced obedience and perseverance and strength in prayer and worship. Uh, two years of just really just staying in faith and had no choice but to expect miracles and pray for them daily. I've seen many miracles during this time. I watched five pork chops turn into seven. I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but I would like to see it happen at my house. I'll, but I'll take the steak, praise the Lord. We'll take the steak and amen so we could feed everyone, amazing. Um, and we had driven to Dallas and not, didn't know how we were gonna get the funds to get back and um, uh, miraculously, $1,000 showed up in our account for us to get home. Uh, Doug, Doug got out of the hospital on Christmas Eve and the hotel stayed, uh, that we stayed at gave us two rooms at, uh, in a suite at the hospital rate. Um, they decorated the room with a full-size tree and got us, a holiday, got us holiday activities to complete in the hotel. Just a few of the miracles we witnessed in a few years. Uh, we've had some friends. She said, I have uh, two beautiful ladies that I can share and pray and study with and study the Bible with and uh, have fun with. Um, I've put in applications for many, uh, excuse me, she said, I had put in uh, applications for many companies and finally got a hit. I started in January and have been promoted and given three pay raises this year alone. Uh, Doug has big news for the year. He accepted a position making double what he was making here and he's moving, so they're moving back to Washington. That's the sad part of the story, but they're moving back to Washington he's, and that's what he's doing. They're still here for a little bit. Um, his start date was October uh, 1st, 2023, exactly three years to the day of when he started here in Louisiana. We'll be joining him uh, when school year, year ends but this year alone, our family income has quadrupled. Icing on the cake, when I make the move back to Washington, my company wants me to work and to work remote. And with Doug's promotions, we'll be heading back to Washington and family, but um, moving, moving to Louisiana uh, totally was not on our radar whatsoever. And it was a gift given to us by the maker himself. In the last three years, God has equipped me with gifts I could have never received anywhere else, and I will always be thankful for this season, even though it's the hardest one we've been through. Amen. So we'll miss y'all when you move on. But, I mean, miracle after miracle after miracle, and I can remember, and I think Matt had told me this, you know, that while they were... Um, while they were in the hospital, or while you were in the hospital, they'd always watch online, always watching online, and uh, getting their faith fed and for months. And so praise God uh, for the word of the Lord and God's faithfulness to your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to have uh, Thaddeus and Alpha go ahead and come up just for a moment. And like I said, there's more than I can share in, in uh, uh, I don't know, a few weeks of services, honestly. And so we'll maybe find some other ways we can share it. But um, God's been doing some big things in their life and uh, their family. And yeah, you can just make sure it's on for you. Um, and I've asked them whenever they felt comfortable to share it. And so here we are today, uh, New Year's Eve. And uh, he always looks so nice, got like a suit and tie on, and I'm making me look bad up here. You know what I mean? Like I had my suit on last week, and today I was like, I ain't doing it again. Not till Easter's, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, gosh, God has done so much in, in my and in, in Alfred's lives and in our family I mean, over the years. But uh, to talk about this year, um, you know, uh, I didn't really prepare like <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm just I'm just gonna go with it. So Alfred and I, you know, we we've been really, really strict uh tithers and givers uh ever since uh November two thousand thirteen. Because we were born again September eighth, two thousand thirteen, right there. And uh and it didn't matter how little we have or I mean it could be ten dollars or, or it could be ten ten thousand dollars. We're we're gonna we're gonna tithe, we're gonna give, we're gonna do and we're gonna remain obedient whether it's ups, downs, whatever, and we're just gonna trust God in every situation. And we knew, and, and, you know, as, as our business grew, as, as uh, our opportunities came, that eventually we would be excelled to, you know, the breakthrough level, the level where, where we're going, you know, beyond uh, anything that, that, that we could imagine or think. Like it says, yeah. he'll, he'll 
He'll give you the desires of your heart, but he'll also bless you uh, more abundantly than, than you can think or imagine. So going into this year, you know, we, uh, we always write down things that we, we're believing God for, but kind of this year, my thoughts were taking the limits off of God because I think we kind of limited him before as thinking, okay, we got this, this, and that we want to believe God for this year, and if he does that, we're good. We know he's, he's faithful. So this year, kind of took the limits off, but, uh, you know, but we did have some goals we wanted to reach. We knew we wanted more properties. We knew we, we, we wanted to take our business to another level. And, um, and we knew that he was preparing us for, for what was to come this year. And uh, so I'll back up a little bit and talk about that, how he's, he arranged different relationships ever since we started in real estate. That, that was a blessing to just start in real estate. And God arranged different relationships for us that could not have happened. We, we could not have made that happen. Like he put us in front of people that there's no way we got in front of those people or able to do business with those people if it weren't for him. Absolutely no way. No way at all. So then um, uh, he also positioned us to excel as far as uh, our education and professional development. We knew we wanted to be, we wanted to be the best in real estate in Central Louisiana. So we started to go to more schools, get more certifications, designations, and all these things. And you know, and some of these people equivalent, you know, they equivalate, equivalent to uh, degrees in our industry. You know, once you reach certain designations and things like that. So we were just going after every single one of them, so that no matter what situation we get in with someone, we can be of help to them properly. You know, to actually service them. You know, because that's the way we approach our business is to help people. You know, the money just comes. But if you, so if you help people and you do things properly with the right heart, then the results are gonna be, gonna be right for you, you're gonna be blessed. So God positioned us to get just degree, well not degree, designation and certification after, one after another. And doors kept opening, doors that we knew he was only opening. Uh, and so, uh, this year we knew, like I said, we wanted to get more property. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, back me up. Keep me on track. I should've, I should've, I should've. So I kind of, I want to go back to before um, this year. I want to go back to six years ago. Six years ago, we were moving from rental property to rental property, you know, just, just trying to make it, you know, um, trying to keep a roof over our heads. And one Sunday, I remember Pastor Aaron and Aaron Cody were believing for the property next door. We didn't have the property in Pineville yet. Yeah. And Pastor Aaron asked that everybody do him a favor. And if you're driving down Horseshoe Drive, make sure that as you pass by there, say, we are well able to possess the land. And so our family, every time we drove past. We are well able to possess the land. We are well able to possess the land. Come on, girls, we made kind of a game out of it. Come on, girls, let's say it. We are well able to possess the land. And I think over the amount of time that we, we did that, and I'm, the, the church didn't end up getting the property next door, they did get a property in Pineville yeah. that wasn't even on sale. Yeah, so, yeah, we possessed the land. Y'all possessed the land. Be there in a few minutes. But in us saying that, I think it, it actually, um, some of that blessing started to overflow in us and, and it, it awakened something in us like, okay, we're, if, the, if the church can possess extra land, then you know, why can't we? We're the church, we're part of the body of Christ. Um, if that word is spoken from God for the church, then he wants his whole church to be blessed. So let's just start decreeing that over our own situation, over our own household, over the property that we want to own one day. And so we found um, a home that had, it, it wasn't our forever home. I was holding out for that forever home. I want to live nice now. <laughs> and... Thaddeus just kept thinking forward, well, no, we got to be smart about this, you know. When we're praying for this blessing, we want something that's not just, you know, going to um, be a blessing to us today because it's really nice to live here or whatever, but we want something that's going to grow us. 
And so he had his heart set on a home that had an a, um, a income property with it, like a, a apartment yeah. with it. And I looked at things and, and brought him things, and, and he kept shooting them down. Nope, nope, that's not it, that's not it. So I said, you know what, God, I'm done. I'm, I'm done looking for properties. If, if he wants one, he's gonna have to find it himself. <laughs> and so one came to my email through Zillow. And I opened that up and, and showed it to him. I was like, I think you like this. And he's like, oh, yeah, I love it. So we went out, he went out the same day and uh, set an appointment with the realtor that was um, the listing agent at the moment. And we bought that house. That was six years ago. It came up in my memories the other day, so that's how I know. Um, six years ago. So we had a house and we had a, a garage apartment that already had a tenant in it and so it was helping to pay our mortgage just having that tenant there um so now during that time uh a, a, a dream of his from before had been to have his real estate license when we lived in biloxi 10 years ago 15, how long has it been now so it's been about 12 13 years ago um he started real estate school there and somewhere along the way, you know, life just happened and he never went back to finish up. Well, when we bought that house, he got a chance to be a part of the process. He decided that he was going to go back to school, get his real estate license. You know, so, so often we say, you know, we're waiting on the Lord. Mm. But Good. it's really important what you do while you're waiting. Right. You don't just wait for God to do everything for you. He made you able. Right. So he decided to pick it back up. Let's go ahead. Let's go back and, and pick that dream back up. And he got his license. First try taking the test. Although many people fail over and over again before getting their license. So once he started doing it, I started getting a drive about, well, you know, we need to do something to spend time together. I'm hardly ever seeing you. And, you know, we need to pick up a hobby. And I was like, okay, well, he seems to love real estate. So... I'm gonna pick up that hobby with him. I'm his helpmate, right? Why should he have to carry the load by himself? So I got my license. <laughs> first try. Did you guess I was gonna ask? Did you get the first time first or not? First try. <laughs> <laughs> um, and from there, you know, we we began to believe God. Okay, God, if you made this happen for us, something that I never fathomed I could do. I mean, I was happy being a housewife, so I was, you know, I felt like I was raising the family, you know, and. I was good with that, I was content with that, but I'm also happy to be a help to my husband. And I feel like that's the greatest calling that God has given me. Um, so from there, I'll pass it back to him. So, um, it's incredible too, because this year, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about the, the property. It was another a property this year too that <laughs> popped up that Alfred saw, uh, it, uh, that was it really? Oh, but uh, it was a property she saw this year, and it was, it was uh, a 20-acre property. It was earlier this year, and, um, and I saw it and, and uh, talked to a, a partner of mine, another one that's a relationship that would not have happened without God. And so we uh, immediately saw the value in it and the investment value and put in an offer, and, uh, and we just purchased that property like uh, a month ago. So he's increased us there with more property. And, um, uh, but then in the meantime of, of getting that one, we saw another residential lot that had a slab that we can build another rental property on. And so, uh, same thing, God worked it out for us to get a credible deal on it. And so that we're just increasing properties, you know, and, and I knew that at the beginning of this year, this is the year to increase property, uh, that, that we have, that we're going to possess more of the land. And so God has just been fulfilling that all this year. Um, we have uh, been in agreement with Pastor Aaron the entire time that this is the first year of the Flourishing Five. And we say it all the time. We're in the Flourishing Five and this is the first year. And so we thought things would be gradually building up to the fifth year. You know, because uh, I got my broker's license last year and people kept saying, you know, when are y'all going to have your own broker brokers? When are you going to have your own brokers? I said, well, in some years, in some years or something like that. You know, I know, I know already God is setting us up for things because of where he's taken us in the education, where he's taken us as far as uh, uh, 
you know, uh, our position in, in like the company because we became experts in the office to actually instruct the agents and to, uh, you know, teach them the tools, the systems, and, and uh, you know, we started teaching classes at the, at the brokerage and uh, actually became a contract instructor for the company. But, so we knew he was, he was growing us and, and, and expanding us as far as that, you know, qualifying us, getting us ready. Jermina mm, yeah. prophesied that over us one night. Um, this, was, this was shortly after we got our licenses. That's so like five years ago. It was, no, it was right after y'all bought your house. It was after the closing. And I remember her pulling us to the side and saying, hey, one day you're gonna be in a position where you can teach people how to do what you do. And I just thought, uh, we haven't been doing this long enough. It's only been a couple years and we're still learning, always learning. And she's like, no, just trust God, you're gonna be teaching. Yeah, so, uh, so we knew God had a plan, you know. We even had people asking us too, why, why are y'all doing all this, you know, getting all these, these designations and things. And, and so we knew we wanted to serve properly, but I knew God had a plan along with that. And normally it takes away from your business, but God kept us to every year our business kept growing. We kept, I mean, like really doubling pretty much every year our business just expanding and growing while we're spending all this time doing these designations. And so uh, it's, it's extremely difficult. But this particular year, uh, after, you know, everyone's saying, you know, uh, or we can ask several times, are we going to open our own brokers? You know, and, and we were thinking, yeah, it's going it's to be some years off. We still got some things to, to take care of. And, and we didn't want to leave Ladder and Bloom because we love Ladder and Bloom, the corporation. We love the tools that they have. We love the system that they have. And so, you know, what would that mean if we wanted to leave and open our own brokerage? Well, around June this year, it was just, it was, a, it, it was really a conversation that I don't, I don't even think I was supposed to be privy of. But, he, but I found out that the company wanted to uh, franchise this local location here. And so I jumped in the middle of it. I just uh, take a chance and told them, we're interested, you yeah. know. And so they had other prospects and, and things too. But, um, but then we started talking. Uh, they knew our experience. Um, the president of the company and the chairman are, are CCIMs. I'm a CCIM, so they know I, I know financials and investment and things like that. So it was months of negotiations and stuff like that, and me reviewing the finances of the of the office and seeing if everything is going to fit. And uh, and in the end, in October, God bless us to be able to buy the, the Ladder and Bloom Alexandria brokerage. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You know, and it's just, it's things like that, that, you know, that, that's when my mind was completely blown and I was just like, you know, <laughs> there's, there's no cap to what God can do. Right. Come on. You know? Because that, that just does not happen. It, it does not happen, <laughs> you know, to be here, to be an agent, uh, for uh, as little time as we've been agents, you know, to even come as far as we, we did even with the, with the designations because most of those, when we did them, Louisiana Realtors and National Association of Realtors were like, wow, y'all did that. It only takes people five years to get this designation. You did it in one year. It's because God redeems the time. <laughs> and so he's done the same thing with us, with our brokers. He's redeemed the time, which I just, I, <laughs> I was just like, what's next? Because this is only the first year of the Flourishing Five. Yeah, yeah, come on. So, and you know what, and, and someone did prophesy uh, uh, also to, uh, right after we bought our brokerage, it's, it's, a, it's a mentor of mine, and he was like, you gotta think bigger now. I'm going to him, talking to him about, okay, I've got, I've got the brokerage now, this, you know, I know you're still gonna be here to, to like help, I can call you, this is on the commercial side. And he said, Daddy, I'm gonna tell you, now that you have this, you gotta think bigger. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, exceedingly abundantly. But, well, yeah. And and I just want to say we just we just it's just the 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 commitment. Like no matter what, if it's if, during rough times, good times, we've always just been. That's right. Been just uh, content and believing God. 
on our tithe, we, we write, you know, the windows of heaven are open to me. That was Miss Lois that told you that the first time, I had to write that one. And then uh, sometimes we, we, we write 2 Corinthians 9, 8, you know, the Alpha and I write, Alpha and I will always have more than enough and have enough to give to every good work. Great. Great. And, and we just, just time and time, we just believe God. And I'm telling him, over the years, he has always blessed us and always just blown our socks off. But this year, I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. Like the, the miraculous, the impossible absolutely happened to us this year. Come on, church. I want to say one more I got, thing you can. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to share a few, um, I tried to save them this morning on my phone a few other scriptures that we have stood on this year. Um, because I know that God is watching over his word That's to right. perform it. So first one is Psalms 27, 13. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait. I say on the Lord. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Numbers 13, 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession of it, for we will certainly conquer it. Isaiah 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Good, good. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And Psalm 5, or Psalm 27, 13. I believe I started with that one, didn't I? <laughs> but That's I'll right. say it again. Let's say it again. <laughs> I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. God's looking over his word to perform it, y'all. And what he does for one, he will do for all. He is no respecter of Come persons. On. Speaking his word and just speaking it, speaking over and over and over again. Even if you're in the middle of something and you're yeah. believing for something, you're believing for something that you think is so big that there's no way that God can do it. Who said he can't? Right. He shaped the, the world with his word. <laughs> he shaped the world with his word. His word still carries the yes. same power even Hallelujah. when it comes out of Come our mouths. We have to speak those words into existence. And when we speak them, we believe them because we know that God is well able to accomplish all yes. that he has done. Hallelujah. So we give him all the glory. We give him all the honor and all the praise for everything that he has done in our lives. Have we been through rough times? Yes. Have we been through challenges? Yes. But he has been there in the midst of every challenge. He's never left us and he is turning things around for his people and for his church. I'm thankful to be a part of this church body who's been here for me through rough times and who is here to celebrate with us through the victories. It's important who you surround yourself with. Surround yourself constantly with people that are speaking into you, not just you, speaking into your children because what we're doing doesn't end with us. We're building generational wealth. We're building something that will last longer than we do. And I just pray that our, our, our testimony helps to inspire others who are trying to do the same things. That's good. That's Thank good. you. You know, scripture says, scripture says to uh, weep with those who weep. And we've done that together. Um, little TJ's in heaven, you know around this time a number of years ago but he's in glory he's in all of our future probably still playing the drums and pulling for the saints as rough as they are right now it's okay but it all says to rejoice with those who rejoice praise the Lord so on this day we rejoice in all that God has done in your life 
Hallelujah. And our hearts and our faith are stirred because of it. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing. I think she got a little preach on her too. I don't know. I was about to just go sit down.